While the exterior of the Argo raft may at first appear utilitarian and cold, it actually belies a really well-crafted and thought-out interior, which is why I'm excited to make it the subject of today's episode of An Architect Reviews, a series in which I utilize my skills in the professional field of architecture to examine something in the digital realm. But as always, my praise and criticisms in these videos shouldn't be taken as fact. They are merely my opinion. Design is, after all, subjective, and everybody is entitled to their own opinion, which I often love discussing with you guys down below in the comment section. So throw on your vacuum-rated flight suit and step out onto the deck with me as we take a look at this exciting ship. And of course, as always, if you think I deserve it by the end, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and the bell icon to show your support. One of the challenges the designers at CIG likely faced with the Argo Raft was translating the Argo Cargo, a rather small ship, and also the first in the lineup of Argo, into something bigger. But I think that they pulled it off, and kind of in a cheeky way. Because when you really look at it, the Argo Raft is actually just a really big Argo Cargo. They share three basic but important elements. An airframe that carries modular boxes that can be detached and attached at will depending on need, and all of it held afloat by rotating VTOL engines with landing gear attached. Granted, the Argo rafts are a little bit bigger and the VTOL engines can rotate independently of the gear, but they're both out on these struts or arms like on the Argo cargo. It's very clever. It's a great way of scaling up the same idea. And if I had to coin a phrase for a ship we often use in architecture, I'd call it a metabolist design, although it's not fully modular. Still though, it has these detachable cargo pods that can be swapped out based on the needs of the user, making it adaptable. But something it also shares in common with metabolism is its mechanical nature. It has no pretense about being sleek and trying to look fast. It is what it is, it performs its function and embellishes these mechanicals and exposes them for the user to enjoy how this thing is put together, albeit in a virtual environment. Unfortunately though, these cargo modules aren't currently detachable and that's something we'll have to wait until the cargo refactor to see actually function, but I can't wait to see it. Some other areas of note are the use of the new textures that can change for the engine cowlings that allow it to glow or become more dull depending on use, which look really, really cool. It's rather unimpressive defensive systems, including a remote size 3 turret, two size 3 weapons, and an option for two gimbaled size 1 weapons for the pilot, and these strange bumpers uh, above the cockpit. I'm not quite sure what these are for and what it's supposed to bump into, but they look cool. It makes me think that there's some other thought process going behind the design of this that escapes me at the moment. But if all it's supposed to do is make it feel more utilitarian, okay, it, it, it works. But now let's take a look at the interior of the ship, because just like the exterior, there's a lot of great detail to examine and some really well-crafted spaces like I alluded to at the beginning of this video. We'll enter through its primary access lift. You can also get in through an uh, airlock on the side, but of course, you won't be able to use that well in atmosphere. So we'll start off on the lower deck, which is the command deck and the habitation deck. One thing that immediately strikes me on entering the interior is the color orange making its way on into the living quarters. So I hope you guys really love this color because it's literally everywhere. It seems to me that it wants to remind you that you're in an industrial ship, a utilitarian vessel that performs a function. It's not a luxury cruiser. So I suppose from that perspective, it does its job well. It's also a sensibly arranged interior. You immediately can step onto the bridge if you want to fly away. Before we explore other parts of the ship, let's first check out the other ingress point, the airlock, which is once again a really sensible thing to have on this ship because it is ultimately a ship that will be used in zero-g quite often, being a cargo ship that probably will ferry cargo from surface to space and back. What I particularly love is the fact that it's got padded walls because sometimes when you come into an airlock, you come in a little hot and hit a wall. It's also got some pretty cool lights that you can turn on and off, but only for this space, kind of like a decompression light. Though it doesn't actually work with any sort of decompression sequence, which is a little disappointing, but we know that decompression will be a feature that eventually comes online. But now let's make our way to my favorite part of the ship, the living quarters, which I think is really well designed. First of all, I like that you step up into the space. It makes it feel a bit more dynamic. 
maybe a bit more special to have the living quarters elevated from the flight deck. In the past, I've criticized CIG for making the interiors of ships far too cold, having lights that are of a bluer tint. Not so the case on the inside of the Argo raft. It looks warm and welcoming, like a place that you'd want to live in. That's exactly what I look for in a good ship interior. It is a bit sparse and utilitarian, sure, but ultimately it's a ship that you live on while you're working, so it's not really meant to be, like I said before, a luxury ship. Despite that though, sometimes luxury isn't about the materials, it's about how well designed the interior is. Take for example the common area, which is where you sit down to have a bite to eat with your crewmates. Not only is it a cozy booth with nice padded sides, but it also has a window. While it may at first seem unfortunate that it looks out onto a cargo box, from another perspective it actually makes a lot of sense if you want to keep an eye on your cargo while you're relaxing, making sure no pirates swing by and detach a piece or try cutting into one of them while you're unaware. But also take a look at the galley. Now, Granted, it's hard to judge the utility sizes and placement because I don't really understand what they are or how big they should be, but I do understand some basic ideas about where you can put items and little cubby holes for storage. Look at this nice little slot for the trays, or the continuous work surface allowing more than one person to utilize the space in the preparation of food. And also take note of the garbage disposal slash trash can here in the corner. So long as this is used for food waste, I think it makes a lot of sense to be here because you can put it right next to your food prep area and immediately dispose of the excess food waste. And then that can be used in processing other types of consumable products, presumably considering that this is a spacecraft and you may want to save anything you leave over to be processed into something edible for later. There are also some useful crew storage compartments here next to the common area, which allows you to actually physically store items in the new inventory system in the game. I also like this little cubby to store books and what have you. Just adjacent to the space is what I would describe as Star Citizen's very own version of a walk-in closet. Sensibly, it has stuff like weapon storage, access to the upper deck that doesn't require power, so if the power goes out, you can get up to the mechanical room of the ship. And you also have suit locker storage here. This makes a lot of sense if you want to have two different types of suits, maybe an EVA suit, as well as an outdoor heavy suit for going down on planet surfaces or really, really hot moons. And of course, you also have the head of the ship here, which is very compactly designed. Every element of this space is retractable, allowing you to maximize it for your intended use. A place to wash your hands, a place to take a shower, a place to drop a deuce if you need to. Though, make sure not to accidentally hit that button while you're using it. <laughs> Though it seems like a pretty hilarious but also disgusting practical joke to play on somebody. I wouldn't want to be the butt of that joke though. Ah, okay, that was a bad pun. But now let's leave the bad puns in the toilet and move on up to the upper floor through this nice little ladder that takes us up without any need for power to the upper deck. This deck is mostly for mechanicals. It contains all the access ports for all the different modules that make the ship run. And it's also the deck where you'll find one of the more unique areas or programmatic elements of the Argo raft, which is going to be a new thing for Star Citizen. And that's the ship's cargo console. I guess that's what I'm going to call it. Basically what this does is allow an operator to attach and detach cargo pods to the ship at will. This has a significant advantage over other cargo ships in that you can have these pods loaded independently of the ship's presence, allowing them to be packed up first and then attached to the ship like what we have in the real world with semi-trailers, allowing the operator of the vessel to be as efficient with their time as possible. This is going to make a huge difference when the cargo refactor comes online in full force, where we have to physically load cargo and take time to do so. This can also potentially limit your exposure time in a dangerous environment. Say for example, you could drop these cargo pods off in the front of one of the drug labs for the jump town missions or the jump town event and have them loaded and then come back when it's safe to pick them up and take them away without having to expose your ship to direct fire at least for an unnecessary length of time. Moving aft on the second deck, we'll find ourselves in the engine bay, or at least what I can equate to an engine bay. I'm not sure what these modules actually do. The space is open and leaves enough space for more than one person to work on these modules, and in the future when the engineering mechanics of Star Citizen come online, it's going to make it a lot easier to work on these things on the fly, especially under duress. 
But that's something that we're going to have to revisit in some of my reviews when those systems actually become usable. Right now it's hard to judge for 100% certain. But now it's time to visit the final space on this ship that we have yet to take a look at. The bridge. Much like the other Argo ships that have made their way into the universe, the Raft's bridge is Spartan. However, it's got everything you need to get the job done, as well as great visibility to the outside of the ship. The seat is simple, but it's anything but delicate. It looks like it could take a beating, like something you'd find on a skid steer in our current present world. And I strongly suspect that they use skid steers from companies like Caterpillar in our real world to inform the designs of the Argo ships. That makes a lot of sense. Caterpillars are workhorses, meant to take a beating on a work site. And these ships are no different. They're going to be in and out of high traffic areas with a lot of cargo boxes being moved around. You want them to stand the test of time. In short, this ain't no dandy ship. It's a vessel for a working man or woman meant for somebody who wants to be out on the road and making a buck to put food on the table. And there's also something to be said for a ship that has that lived in universe feel. It feels realistic, it feels believable. And for that reason, I give the Argo Raft high praise. It's the ship that you may want to turn to in the future if you decide to take up shipping. I've been Morphologist. For an Architect Reviews, I'll see you guys in the next one.